Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first lesson of fundamental analysis. Today's lesson is on supply and demand, and it's a pretty simple concept, pretty difficult to explain, and I'm going to try to do it. Okay, so supply and demand, how, that, how does that work? Well, <clears throat> it's crucial in the stock market, and it's basically the driving force between prices rising and declining. How this works is uh, basically at any one point in time, stocks have a fixed supply, right? Um, and demand is what drives stocks higher or lower. If there's a lot of demand, that means a lot of people are trying to buy a stock and that stock price will go up. Now, if there's low demand and people don't want the stock, they start to sell the stock. When there's more sellers than buyers, stock will go down. More buyers than sellers, stock will go up. More sellers than buyers, stock will go down. Now, this happens quite a bit in the market. And I, br I brought up this chart of RKDA to show you exactly that. If you notice here, we have this massive spike. The stock was trading at $4. Next thing you know, it's trading at $66. A crazy, crazy spike. Now, why did this happen? And how do I know it's supply and demand? Okay, this is how I know. If you take a look here at the bottom, right? This is a volume chart. The volume chart shows you how many uh, shares are traded in a day. This day, there was about 12.5 million shares traded. If you look over here, when the stock was trading at $4, there was barely any volume, right? You get one day, not that much volume, but still, okay? This is just a massive amount of volume. This is the demand. This is basically a demand chart. This is showing how many people want, want this stock. Uh, and that's why we had this massive run-up. Another reason, and the reason why I'm using this chart in particular is because, one, it's a drastic move. Two, this stock had, this stock changed the supply. And what they did is they had 40 million shares outstanding. And then they went and they got together and they said, okay, we're going to cut the amount of shares outstanding and that's going to significantly reduce the supply of stock. So they do this by a reverse stock split, right? And I'm going to cover that later, but just bear with me. Okay, so now this company only has 2 million shares total. And they had 12 million shares traded in one day. That's, a, that's too much demand for the supply of this stock, and it shot this stock way, 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 way up. Now, this has happened before. Uh, you can look at a chart of Bitcoin. You can look at TLRY. This is the most recent stock that has done something like this, where it went from 25 to 300. But let's stick on this. Okay, so... This went up. There was tons and tons of demand and a little bit of supply. That drives the price up, right? Because if there's more demand than supply, the price will go higher. If there's more supply than demand, the price will go lower. And now, this is what this is what a lot of people look for. They look for low supply stocks called low float stocks. And I'm going to show you in a minute how to check the supply of a stock. But they look for these stocks and then everyone starts buying them and they shoot way, way, way up, creating a bubble. Now, what happens on the backside is the part that fascinates me. Okay? You never know when this is going to happen. But when you find this, you know that this is going to happen for a couple of reasons. Okay? One, this demand is basically artificial. It's not real. It's not going to last. It's not that demand isn't 
the same demand that we see in Apple, right? Oh, constant, like basically constant, always trading millions of shares. People want this stock and they've wanted it for years and years and years, right? More and more demand for Apple. This is consistent demand. If you look at the chart in RKDA, no demand ever, just this one rare event where there was a lot of demand. Now, why did this crash? This crashed for two reasons. One, the demand stopped. There is no longer any demand. So when demand goes away, people start to sell. Selling creates this drop in price. Now, the second reason why this dropped, right? This went from 60 all the way back down to four is because they increased the supply of stock, which also is a negative, has a negative effect on the stock price. So as they increase supply, if demand's not there and they increase supply, the stock plummets. And that's what you see here. Okay. And now let's get in. I hope that's, I hope you understand that. Um, I would look at a lot of charts and start to just, you know, look at them, see if you can tell the imbalance between supply and demand, lots of demand. Whoa, big, big shoot up. And then over time, demand fades and the stock fades, the price gets lower. All right, let's see if I can pull up and teach you how to find... I had it pulled up already, but it went away. No worries. Okay, RKDA. So this move started in the very beginning of the year. And to show you the difference in supply and demand, this is... Okay. So this is before the stock split. Before they changed the supply of the stock, we had 42.683 million shares for this company. Now, after they decided they were going to do a reverse stock split around this day. Let's take a look. Yes, reverse stock split. Okay. They did a 20 to 1. So that means you take the amount of total shares and you divide it by 20. So they went from 40 to, or 46 million to about 2.3 million. Or 42.5 million. And they cut that in half. So now they have like 2.1 million shares. Because they divide it by 20. Okay. Now. This is, yep, this is it. So we know that, let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. All right. So we know right here, this company had 42 million shares outstanding. We know right here, they had 2 million shares outstanding. We can see here, they had demand, tons and tons of demand, a spike in demand, and the stock shot way the hell up to $66. Now, demand starts to fade. The stock price fades because we know once demand fades, stocks go down. Right here, they increased supply. They went from having 2 million shares and they issued more more shares, which is increasing the supply, which also, if you increase the supply, you have to increase the demand to meet it. As they did that, they increased the supply and the demand wasn't met. So that is why we have a massive fall in price and that's why the price is all the way back down because really nothing changed in the company over this time period, okay? so. Um, I hope that got, I hope that can clear some things up for you guys. I hope that video was useful. I know it wasn't the best video, but 
the information in this video is very solid. Um, you know, how to find the demand. You want to look for these 10 Qs. Uh, you can find them in 13 Gs. And you can find them in 10 Ks. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to do a full video on how to find the supply of a stock. So stay tuned.